Hey everybody! I picked up a maple log that has some spalting in it. Um, I already turned the other half of this. This side has a branch that came out, so there's basically a pith running through one section of it, almost through, through half of it, and it's splitting. So I decided that I was just going to cut that whole section out and then see what I had left. What I'm left with is a pretty funky shape that's not even at all. So I'm going to put it between centers and see if I can line it up in such a way that I might be able to get a small bowl out of it. I'm using my tail center in the headstock just so that I can get the blank lined up on the right axis so that I can kind of get it looking sort of like that. I'm thinking I should be able to get a shallow bowl out of it. Once I got it situated, I took it off and using a Forstner bit, I drilled a hole at an angle so that the spur drive would sit flat and push against the same axis that I had lined it up with. I used the point from the live center as the center point for the Forstner bit. And I also marked the position for the tailstock and drilled a hole through the bark to make sure that the tail center had something solid to push against. My videos are usually sped up 600%, which makes it seem like everything goes really fast, but here's some real-time footage of how slow the roughing process was. I think this whole project took me a little over four hours. I switched from my 5 8 inch bowl gouge to a round nose scraper to see if I could get it roughed out any faster. I had a lot of material to remove. You can see that there's still bark there. You can also see that the blank isn't very balanced side to side. The center is very off center. But I did what I could with the blank that I had to work with after I'd cut the pith out, and I'm just going to keep cutting and see what we can do. Back to the round nose scraper for a little while. I was able to get the speed up a little bit and we're running somewhere around 420. I'm making some progress on getting the sides rounded off, and I've been able to raise the lathe speed up. I'm going to show you a little bit more real-time footage here.
I'm going to use a mortise on this piece. And the mortise is a little bit bigger than I would maybe like to make it. Um, I can't really change that at this point because I've got it between centers still. I drizzled a little thin CA glue in the mortise area just to help stiffen it up a little bit. The wood is pretty solid, but it is spalted and punky in some spots, so I wanted to make sure that that mortise didn't break out. And you can see it's running a little bit funny. And I didn't like the way that it was running a little bit funny, so I decided that I was going to cut a new mortise. Um, in order to do that, I flattened off the top, and then I drilled a hole for a wormwood screw. A couple of things about the wormwood screw. Generally, I don't recommend mounting the piece like this, but I have had a lot of trouble getting it to start threading, so I turn the speed down as low as it will go and get it started, and then let go of it before it fully seats, and then I fully seat it by hand. The other thing about the wormwood screw is that I was having a lot of trouble with it coming loose on me while it was in the chuck, and I watched a guy, um, I think his name is Daryl, he's from Dreadnought Woodworking, and he did a little video on Instagram showing how you're supposed to pull the slack out of the wormwood screw. So basically you, f you put it in the jaw and get it seated, and then before you tighten it, you pull it against the insides of the jaws. I thought that it was like a tenon and that you would want the shoulder of the wormwood screw up against the chuck from the outside, but it turns out you want it from the inside. And I haven't had any trouble with that since, so pull the wormwood screw out before you do the final tightening. Okay, now I have a mortise that I'm happy with, and I added a foot, and I am going to just keep cutting until I decide what this thing is going to be. It hasn't really told me yet. I'm kind of leaning toward a calabash bowl at this point because it looks like I should be able to cut that flat spot out and have a reasonable sized bowl left. I switched from my half inch 40-40 grind bowl gouge to a negative rake scraper. I'm just working on sort of finalizing the shape. I'm really liking my new scrapers and I've been doing a little practice with the shear scraping. Here's some real-time footage of using the spear point scraper for shear scraping and it left a super smooth finish on this punky maple. Got to keep that handle dropped and that tip away from the bowl. I'm still pretty much just winging it here, just trying to work with the shape that I have. but I'm starting to think maybe about a hollow form. Hmm, yeah. So now I have to try to match the curve of the front half or the top half to the curve that I already have for the bottom half. Getting close. I'm also trying to make the rim on the top for the opening to be about the same size as the foot I have on the bottom.
I don't have a hollowing system yet, so I know that I'm going to make the opening relatively large because I have to be able to get my carbide tools in there. I do have a swan neck hollower, but I'm not super crazy about it. So I started with, I think, an inch and three quarters, and then I put my biggest Forstner bit in, which is a three inch bit. I got a little bit of slop going on in my tailstock. I know that I don't have the center point engaged in this, and that's making this a little bit wobbly. Um, but it really wasn't very happy using this this big a bit in there So I took it out and I put in a slightly smaller one I think this is two and nine sixteenths or something This is also more of an industrial bit and it's got kind of an auger Center point which I wasn't really thinking about when I drilled down to the depth that I had marked with the smaller Forstner bit so I left a pretty deep hole there in the bottom and um I'm pretty sure that if I tried to cut that hole out that I would go through the mortise. So I'm going to leave it alone and not make a funnel. I finished hollowing it out and I'm just going to clean the rim up with my small bowl gouge, round it over and try and get a kind of a clean cut. A little bit of shear scraping with my 3 8 bowl gouge. That really does leave a fantastic surface. It took me a while to get the hang of it, but it did a really nice job on this maple. What didn't do a really nice job on this maple were my carbide tools on the inside. It's pretty punky in there. There's some big tear out. I did the best I could sanding it, but it's just going to have to be what it is. I used a three pound cut of shellac to seal the inside. I probably could have done this and then gone back over and cut it again to see if I got any cleaner cut, but I used 60 grit sandpaper when I started and while it's not pretty, it's fine. This little bark inclusion that's left was just a little bit, not really loose, but it, it just felt funny. I wanted to stabilize it. so. I tried really hard to not drizzle the CA glue all over the side of it so that it wouldn't stain it, but you can see how well that worked. Fortunately, the coloration in this maple is a little bit varied anyway, so you don't really notice it. And then I went back over the sanding with, started with 80 grit again, I went up to 400. And then I did the denatured alcohol to get all the dust and stuff off, went over it with a gray scotch Bright pad, and I'm using a one pound cut of shellac on the outside as the sealer. For the finish, I was going to try the shine juice again, uh, not use the polishing paste, just use abrasive paste and see if that fixed it. So what I did is I used both kinds of abrasive paste that I have. The first kind that I used is the Axe abrasive paste. So I put that on first and let it do its thing. And then I did a coat of Brad's abrasive paste 
and let it do its thing. These are different products and they give different results. I, for one, like to have some flexibility, especially with my finishing products, because different woods absorb things differently. Sometimes you want a different sheen. Um, I think actually using these in tandem with each other made for a really fantastic finish. Now I'm going to add some shine juice and see what we get. I didn't have any issues with it streaking on me this time, so apparently using just abrasive paste in conjunction with the shine juice is fine. It didn't come out as glossy as it usually does when you use shine juice, but I'm actually glad. I really kind of like the matte finish on it. I made the other half of this into another hollow form. I was able to get a larger one because it didn't have that branch running through it. Sorry for all the background noise. We're having a hell of a thunder dinger going on right now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. Until next time, y'all be safe out there. P. Sherman, 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney.